In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about volume and area conversions. So here, you can take units from, say, miles squared to kilometers squared, or from centimeters cubed to meters cubed, or even from feet squared to meters squared. And these conversions follow slightly different rules than typical conversions. If you haven't yet watched my video on unit conversions, I suggest you do that first. So our very first problem just says, how many square feet is a 50 meters squared apartment? And so, for example, if you were looking to rent an apartment in Europe, they would list the area of that apartment in meters squared. And you'd have no idea, probably, how big of an apartment that is. And 50 meters sounds really small to us, so it's useful to go ahead and convert that to feet squared so we can think about how big that is. Now, on the next slide, I'm going to show you three steps to solve these problems. But on this first slide, I'm just going to walk us through the conversion so that we can understand why we use the steps we use. So we're just going to start this conversion the same way we start all of our other conversions, by writing out our starting quantity and our ending uh, units. So we're starting now with 50 meters squared, because that's what the problem gives us. And we're trying to go to feet squared. So I'm going to write out 50 meters squared. And then way over here, I'm going to write out feet squared. And we're trying to convert between these two. All right, so here's a typical way to start the problem. We'll say, okay, let's multiply this by some conversion factor. And we know we want to go from meters to feet, so we should put meters on the bottom and feet up top. And then we look at our equality, which tells us that 3.3 feet equals one meter. And we go ahead and we plug that in to our conversion. Now, at this point, a lot of people might say, okay, go ahead and multiply through and we'll be done. But that's a big mistake. Let me tell you why. So if you look at meters squared, what this two here is telling you is that there's actually meters twice in that unit. It's using meters, which is a measure of length, to measure area. And so to do that, it has to use it twice. Because for example, if you wanna calculate area, you usually do something like length times width. So we use length twice. And that means we need to cancel that unit out twice. Another way we could see this is if it says meters squared, that's the same thing as writing meters by meters. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it out that way, and that makes this a little more clear. This is the same thing as writing meters times meters. So 50 meters times meters is the same thing as meters squared. And now we can really clearly see if we just apply this one conversion factor, we're gonna get rid of only one of those meters. And we're left with this really weird unit where we combine meters and feet. And that's not at all what we want. So you can see that if we just apply this conversion factor once, we're going to get the wrong answer. On the other hand, if we apply the conversion factor twice, once for each meter, we'll get exactly what we want. So what we can do is we can go ahead and write another conversion factor of feet and meters. So we want to cancel meters out again, so we write meters on the bottom. And we want to get another feet, so we write the feet up top. Again, we fill that in with 3.3 up top and one on the bottom. Now we can see that when we cancel out our units, we're gonna get rid of this first meters with our first conversion factor, and that second meter goes away from our second conversion factor. Now you can see that we've gotten rid of meters entirely, and what we're left with is feet once, feet twice, or feet squared. So this is actually gonna give us the correct conversion from meters squared to feet squared. And now all we have to do is plug that into our calculator. We multiply 50 by 3.3, and then by 3.3 again. And when we do that, if we take into account significant figures, we will get 545 feet squared. So let me write that feet squared closer. So we get 545 feet squared. The reason there's only three sig figs there is because our meter squared number, 50.0, has three sig figs. And notice, very importantly, I get this feet squared out. And that's because I have feet once, twice, and my conversion factors. So that's how we go through area conversions. Volume conversions are very similar. We're just going to use three conversion factors because now they'll be meters times meters times meters or meters cubed. Okay, we're going to do one more area example where this time I've written down the steps explicitly. So it's nice to have these steps, but it's also nice to understand why we use them. This is a good time to pause the video, go ahead and give this problem a try, and then play it again and see if you got it right. All right, so the first step says, just as we did in the pro last problem, write down your starting quantity and your target units. 
And the problem reads, how many square inches are in 20 square yards? So here you might be buying fabric, say, and you know it's 20 square yards of fabric, but you wanna cover something and you know it's size in square inches. So do you have enough fabric? All right, and so our starting quantity in this case is 20 square yards. So I'll write down 20 and then yards squared. And I want to eventually get to square inches. So I want to get to square inches. So that's what I'm going to write way over on the other side. Inches and then the square up top. So you notice that inches squared and square inches are just two ways to say the same exact unit. Just like square yards and yards squared are the same exact unit. All right, and now what I'm going to do for step two, it says set up one conversion factor. So we're just going to set up our conversion factor for going from yards to inches. And so we know we want to get rid of yards, which means we're going to write our yards on the bottom. And we know that we want to get to inches, which means we're going to write our inches up top. And then we fill that in from our equality, and our equality tells us one yard equals 36 inches. So that means the 36 goes by the inches, and the one goes by the yards. Now, once again, notice that if we just do this one conversion factor, we're going to get rid of the yards once, but we're going to be left with a yard. So we have to apply the conversion factor twice, and that's what step three tells us. It just says, write that conversion factor again. And that's for area. We have to write that conversion factor twice to get rid of both yards. So our next conversion factor that we write looks exactly like the first one. And now you see, okay, we get rid of the yard there and the yard there. So we've gotten rid of our yards and we're gonna collect two inches or inches squared. Let me erase these inches here so I can write it more neatly. So this is all gonna be equal to just 20 times 36 times 36. And if we do that multiplication, it gives us a ton of square inches. I'll actually write it down here so that we have enough room for it. So it's going to give us 25,900 inches squared. That's a surprisingly high number of square inches. And that's common because you think, oh, there's just 36 inches in a yard, so there shouldn't be that much bigger of a number. But it gets much, much, much bigger because we apply that 36 twice. And the next problem we're going to do is volume conversions. And there you can imagine that, that uh, we just add another conversion factor and multiply by 36 again. So this volume conversion problem says, what is the volume of a 51 meter cubed block of gold in cubic feet? Turns out that this is a high end estimate for the total amount of gold ever mined, 50 cubic meters. Doesn't sound like much gold. So we're gonna convert that to cubic feet, see if we can get a better handle for how much that is. Our steps here look almost identical. So it says write down the starting quantity in target units. And so our starting quantity is 51 meters cubed and we want to go to cubic feet. So we have 51 meters cubed, and we want to go eventually to cubic feet. Notice cubic feet has the three there, so feet cubed and cubic feet, same unit. And now step two just tells us set up one conversion factor. And so that's what we're going to do next. And our conversion factor is going to take us from meters to feet. So we want to cancel out meters, which means we're going to write meters on the bottom. And we want to get out feet, so we're going to write feet up top. And our equality up here tells us 3.3 .3 feet equals 1 meter. And that tells us that the 3.3 .3 goes with the feet and the 1 goes with the meter. So 3.3 .3 next to the feet and 1 next to the meter. Again, you can notice a similar problem here. If we just stopped there, we'd get rid of a meter and a meter, and that would go, for, instead of being meters cubed, would be meters squared. Because remember, meters cubed is meters times meters times meters. And if we've just canceled out one of those meters, we're left with meters squared. So you can tell that we're not done with the problem. And step three says, go ahead and write that conversion factor twice more. So we need to write the conversion factor two more times. And that's gonna get rid of those other two meters that are still left. 
So 3.3 feet, we just copy that same exact conversion factor twice more. That's once more, and now twice more. All right, now we have it three times. And that's way too close to our feet cubed, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. And notice now that we've canceled out one meter from our first conversion factor, another from our next conversion factor, and the last meter goes away from our last conversion factor. So we've gotten rid of meters cubed, and now we're gonna get one feet, two feet, three feet, or feet cubed. So all we need to do now is go ahead and multiply 51 by 3.3, by 3.3, and by 3.3 again. And we plug that into our calculator, and what we'll get out is 1800 feet cubed. Again, I've taken into account sig figs there. And if you're unsure about how to take into account sig figs during calculations, go ahead and check out the sig figs and calculations video that I made. And so we see that our 51, meters cubed, 51 meter cubic block turns out to be 1800 cubic feet. So that's the, an upper end estimate for the total amount of gold ever mined. All right, so this is how we do volume and area conversions. It looks very similar to our traditional conversions, only we have to use a conversion factor more than once. If we're doing area conversions, we use two conversion factors. And if we're doing volume conversions, we use three conversion factors. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry. Please leave a comment below. You can always subscribe to my channel to get updates about new videos or visit my channel to see what I have.